Sounds good. Yep. Okay. Um, so good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, wherever you happen to be. Um, <clears throat> uh, we have a, uh, uh, I would say, I, I think this is a light agenda. Um, and uh, so let's, let's get going. Um, the first uh, item is the Hackfest planning and Todd has an update on uh, Chicago and the registration is up. Um, so he can cover that and then also um, uh, put out a query for where we want to have the European um, uh, event, uh, the, Hi the Hackfest rather, in, uh, in Europe. Um, then the second item up is the TSC election. Um, and so uh, I think that starts today, correct? And so we have a final list. I didn't see any notes that said, oh my God, but maybe you did. And uh, then uh, Mark will um, review for us, I guess, just the status of where we are with the uh, performance and scaling working group charter. I think it's still being ratified by the working group. And then um, Hart wanted to take us through a brief update on the white paper. Anything else for the agenda? Okay, if not, Todd, you can kick it off. It's a uh, half this point. Sure thing. Uh, so the U.S. Hackfest is confirmed September 21st and 22nd in Chicago. I've dropped the registration link uh, into the window. If you plan to attend, please get registered as soon as possible. Uh, also, a link for draft agenda. Uh, similar to all the previous Hackfest, we run these in conference format. If there's topics you want to discuss, uh, things you want to work on, uh, or things that you want to hear about, please drop those ideas in there. Uh, we'll firm up the agenda as it gets closer. For this Hackfest, I think uh, a couple of things really looking to further enable uh, collaboration between the various projects and also have uh, increased focus on actual hacking. Um, presentations are still great, but I think uh, one of the things we've been hearing is people want to uh, do some actual hacking um, and collaboration that way face to face. Anything you want to yeah, add to that, Chris? Think, yeah, I, I think that's, that's important. I know Brian. And I've been having some discussions about that, and it really would be good to have a lot more um, sort of cross pollination, if you will, between the different projects and interaction, and and even maybe even some hacking. Um, and so, I think for the Chicago um, Hackfest, um, we will defer having um, any sort of face to face meetings of the various working groups um, because that tends to um, really limit, you know, severely limit what we can put in our agenda, you know, for at least, you know, two or four hours, depending on how many, of the, you know, we get through. Uh, and, um, uh, and so uh, I think, uh, you know, if you have a, a working group, um, then I would strongly suggest that you, um, you know, think about, you know, in, instead of spending a long, uh, time a lot of time i should say at the hackfest but rather maybe have a a call um uh with a an extended um uh, an extended agenda and um <clears throat> i did also notice when i was registering that i guess there's a fee now if you're a no show is is that new or am i just not remembering yeah. that from the past that's something uh, new. I think uh, across Linux Foundation, they've been implementing that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just so that people let us know if they're actually not going to show up. We end up spending a lot of money on um, catering and planning for folks that don't arrive in the end. So just to incentivize people to actually let us know. Um, you know, we oftentimes will see 30 or so people that register and don't show up. And so that's a fair amount of money that hits the budget that we can um, mm -hmm. save otherwise. Okay, thanks. I, I um, like I said, I, I hadn't seen it before, so it is new, and so everyone uh, be mindful of that. Um, but so, just let me ask for a clarification, if I may interject. Just clarification on the snow show. So, if I register and then in two weeks I figure I can't go, I deregister, I can do that, and then there's no fee, right? Totally fine. No issue at all. That's right. Thanks. And is there a cutoff for that, Todd? Um, I, I, I'm not sure what it says in there. It may be 72 hours or something like that. Um, they're they're okay. relatively lenient, but um, yeah, just, just give us okay. a heads up, please. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah, because some people, including myself, you know, may get dragged into something and can't show up. Okay. Um, uh, election. All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We didn't cover. We didn't cover Europe. Sorry. Okay. Uh, are Brian or Marta on today? Uh, Brian is. Yeah. Hi. Hey, sorry, Brian. Mike. Um, I think we're going to talk. So, about, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I was just going to uh, uh, add in. Um, it seems to be that there's support for either the week of the 23rd or the week of the 30th to do uh, an event, uh, a Hackfest in Europe, as probably the last Hackfest of the year as we get into the winter holiday. Um, uh, and and so uh, there's, I think, strong support for uh, doing an event in Berlin. Um, and And what we'd like to try to pin down on this call is uh, which of those two weeks, um, uh, perhaps preferences for cities, uh, we have some options in different places and our opinion of where it might be best. Um, and then wanted to sense people's receptivity to doing it over a weekend rather than during the week, because there are some options that come available. Uh, schools are one, there's another hack space um, that's been offered in Berlin that is easier to get to on a weekend than others. Um, so why don't we just take these one by one and, um, uh, are the, is either the 20th or the 30th, 23rd or the 30th, those two weeks, uh, uh, any, any strong reasons why not to do that for, um, for anybody on the call? Um, so, this is Dave. This is Dave. Sorry. Can I jump in here? The uh, CBOS is in Toronto from the 16th to the 22nd. So if we right. do it on the 23rd, that might be, you know, back-to-back -back weeks gone for people, you know, that might be a little bit harder. Yeah. Okay. And... I would also note that there's a hackathon in Beijing, I think, uh, and Bawa, I saw you on, I don't know, I think it was the 21st, might be, um, I can't remember now, but I think I signed up for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, right. Actually, the, the Hackfest is uh, 20, uh, it's from, I, it's after the links come. At the same time, the link come. So it will be the uh, June 18th and 19th, if I remember correctly. October. Uh, mm. Do you mean October 1819? I could be right. I could be misremembering. And that's conflicting with Cybos, which I think I have to be at. All right, weird. Okay, so noted noted the concern about the week of the twenty third. Any concerns? Any other concerns about that week or the week of the thirtieth? Um, week of the thirtieth uh, would be uh, Halloween. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of a family holiday for many of us, um, uh, even if just a, in, in the evening. Um, uh, and then, not to mention it's or, hard to get through. Not to mention it's hard to get through TSA when you're dressed up as a you know, <laughs> Halloween concert costume. Yeah. Um, you have to see Dan when he gets dressed up. Got to pay extra. Okay, and and keeping on the scheduling theme, strong likes or dislikes for doing this on a weekend rather than two days during the week? Again, this being in Europe. Okay. I'm not hearing any well, strong likes or dislikes. I, I definitely prefer the week than the weekend. I can't say that. Okay. And then finally, um, cities. Uh, we were thinking Berlin, um, partly because uh, it, it, there's a, a ton of interesting blockchain activity there. Um, some of our members uh, have operations there, offices there, uh, that would be great to have them involved in the Hackfest. And I think doing that would, would better enable them to participate. Uh, it's less expensive uh, as a city in general than, than London uh, or, or, or Paris. Um, Paris isn't too bad, uh, but there's other interesting places too, like Lisbon, um, et cetera. But uh, would anyone be opposed if we focused on Berlin as, as, as the city to have this in and came up with some options there and looked elsewhere if we didn't feel like we could come up with good options?
Okay, well, unless I've accidentally been on mute um, this whole time, uh, uh, it sounds like uh, uh, no strong objections to kind of a strategy. So I think, Todd, this is strong enough for us to go back and, and come up with some options and then um, try to converge on a decision in the next week or two. Sounds good. In the next two weeks, basically. Thank you. Oh, uh, actually, one thing just occurred to me, the, the timing for the uh, the annual members meeting, is that um, like a couple weeks right after this? Yeah, I think it's yep. November 9th and 10th. Okay, so that'd be pretty close on the heels of uh, the European meeting then. If we made it later in those two weeks, yeah. Well, I know from, from my travel perspective, it'd be easier if somehow those events could uh, overlap in the same location. So I don't know if uh, these ships have already sailed on both of those separate events, but it's uh, a certain amount of convincing that needs to be done for international travel in my company. Um, as, as, as all of us, I'm sure. Um, uh, yeah, no, I think we just ran into deciding we wanted to do a member summit in Asia after polling, polling our members um, and trying to figure out, you know, the be better options we did consider in a bunch of different cities. Um, uh, and, and, and then it seemed like support from the community for doing um, a Hackfest in Europe before the end of the year as well. Um, oh. where, but doing it in December starts to get too close to the vacations and holidays. Another note there on the uh, member summit that uh, the W3C um, Technical Plenary Advisory Council is in Burlingame, California that same week. So I know there's a couple of us, um, Arno and a few others, that are involved in W3C activities and standardization around what we're doing in Hyperledger that um, might give us some conflicts there. Right. Uh, okay. Um, uh, all kind of uh, issues noted. Um, I think I think we'll I, I think we'll aim for something in kind of the middle of uh, those two weeks, the 23rd and 30th. Um, you know, either late the week of the 23rd to avoid sleepovers, or early the week of the 30th, um, and trying <laughs> trying to see what we can do to um, avoid too much conflict with Halloween. Um, okay, let us take a look at that. Come up with some options. Um, and uh, we'll come back for further discussion on the TSC. Moving on. All right. Uh, the next topic, TSC annual election. Um, we've circulated this several times via email, talked about this the last few calls. Uh, shortly after the TSC call today, we will send out a note to start calling for nominations. Uh, the process and timeline were in the uh, agenda doc that went out. I will paste the list one last time into the chat window now. Please check the master tab. That's what we're going off of. If you are not on there and should be, please uh, send me an email as soon as possible uh, so we can rectify that. Otherwise, after this call, we're moving forward with this list as final uh, to kick off the election process exactly as we've detailed and uh, approved previously. And I'll just put the timeline in here as well for folks. Any questions there? <clears throat> All right. I think so. So that brings right. us on to Mark. Mark? Maybe Mark's on mute. Are you? All right. Hey, I'm trying. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. All right. No, I'm first time I'm calling in from an Android phone because I'm in Sweden and the local calls are expensive. Um, so for the charter, we have um, there was some feedback overnight on the consensus rules and things like that to who can vote. Um, so I felt it best to not you know, proceed with a vote on uh, the mailing list for the performance and scale working group because not everyone would have a fair shot to review it. But I did put the link here in the chat window. Um, the changes we're making, I'm proposing to this, are highlighted in bold. 
um, based off of feedback from the group and one is from the last TSC meeting. Um, so I would just in particular on the process of the group um, regarding how I've defined, proposed we define um, who can vote on the working group issues. Um, you know, is that something that would be acceptable to the TSC? It had, and again, this has not been approved by the Performance and Scale Working Group. But is this something that would be approved by the TSC if it, you know, as stands? Hey, Mark, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by vote. Are you you're talking about yeah. voting to approve the, the working group or voting for things that are proposed by the working group? Anything in the working group that, you know, like we did a vote to bring the charter to the TSC and the TSC wanted some changes made, so we brought it back. Mm -hmm. um, in general, anything within the group um, that we want to make final with air quotes around it would need, you know, some type of vote or agreement. So I think most of the working groups have been working off of consensus. I mean, they may have a an email, you know, that goes out and says, hey, you know, does everybody agree that we're done uh, and we can bring this to the TSC? Uh, it's not a formal thing. It's much more of an informal thing just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, and so, <clears throat> You know, I think we would encourage that working groups continue to operate on a consensus building model. Um, and, you know, if there is dissent, that's fine. And, and um, you know, maybe the thing to do would be, you know, when it is brought to the TSC, the, the you know, the dissenting parties or whatever can, you know, uh, can make their case as well. Um, I mean, that's really, uh, I mean, I, I think in terms of any formal voting, it would be the, the TSC that, that would do that, you know, according to, you know, who's elected and all the quorum rules and all the other stuff that's in the charter. But I think for the working groups, um, consensus is probably the best approach. And I see. Okay, well, I get I, Go ahead. Um, the question was how, you know, what is the definition of consensus? Um, in in uh, so, the case of a work group, is it a simple majority? Is it so? A consensus is really, I think, um, something that the chair needs to sort of assess for themselves. Um, uh, you know, <clears throat> if if it's clear that you know there's um, uh, never going to be um, you know complete agreement. Um, then uh, obviously, you know, you you start to work towards, okay, so, you know, if, you know, what would be your minimum required to declare victory um, uh, and, and put that to either party, if you will, uh, you know, either side of an argument and try and get at least a little bit closer. And then even if you can't get all the way there, the chair can say, look, I think we have consensus, we have a minority um, you know, disagreeing opinion, they can bring that to the TSC um, and, and so forth. But um, a lot of working groups operate on consensus. I think if you are no, didn't we have published like chair guidelines? I think that's public at the W3C and, and there's a, a good write up on consensus there. Yes, indeed. There is. I would be happy to send a link. I had blogged way back then about this and there is yeah. indeed. Uh, there is actually uh, education material that J3C put together to help the chairs that is worth looking at. I can dig that up and send the link to the list. But it's basically, like I said, it's it's basically the chair is the decider when he or she feels that, um, uh, you know, there's essentially, net, we're not going to get any further, right, in terms of Towards complete agreement, um, and um, and then you you give the minority side an an option to sort of um, uh, to weigh in. Um, you know, if it's a 50-50 kind of a thing, and there doesn't seem to be a, a, a majority, if you will, um, then you can also bring that to the TSC um, and say, hey, we can't get past this. And, and I imagine. Minimum. 
Many of us, you know, TSC members will be on the working, well, be at least monitoring the working group. I don't yeah. presume to be a member, um, and uh, you know, can help help uh, arbitrate difficult conversations if if needed. Um, and if we're lacking for consensus mechanisms, we can always come up with a proof of work one, which basically says, well, uh, <laughs> if you if you're willing to help write a dissenting opinion, uh, you know, or help help build a better <laughs> test suite, you know, I mean, essentially, yeah, proof of work, right? Um, you're allowed yeah. to dissent. Um, um, uh, but but invest in helping us, you know, lift lift the yep. level of understanding of these challenges by the entire community. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Hello. Uh, uh, again, this, as an example, uh, in the architecture work group, well, we've been kind of following the rough consensus model. Uh, there's ETF guidelines as well uh, around roughly how that works, and uh, you know, I can send a pointer to that as well. But uh, so far, the informal rough consensus approach has worked. Uh, uh, in the architecture work group, and I've seen the same in the identity work group. I don't think we've had any serious, uh, 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 you know, conflicts that we couldn't kind of uh, talk through and kind of uh, get the majority uh, uh, to agree on. And in fact, I don't think there was even a strong um, you know, in, in minority position so far that we couldn't talk through and uh, and get to a rough consensus. And this is Victor. Okay, I appreciate the I, I, I think maybe it is me who raised the voting issue. And uh, for I have uh, go through the working group who charter that noticed uh, there is a clause about uh, PSWG should oversee any performance related projects. So uh, since uh, recently I have been working on a benchmark project and I want to uh, discussed with uh, PSWG in last regular meeting. Uh, after my presentation, uh, some some folks has asked me some questions. But uh, finally, when I ask uh, whether should I present this project to TSC, uh, there's no response. That means no idea. So I want to know how uh, if the work group is going to oversee other performance related projects, how should we make decisions? Uh, there could be yes and there could be no, but uh, what if there is no idea? So I uh, I discussed uh, uh, with Mark, uh, maybe not directly, by uh, commenting on the charter uh, and raised this issue. Indeed, the biggest threat is passivity, you know, not enough involvement rather than perhaps too much passion. Um, yeah. So I, I, I yeah, I, I think you might want to think about whether a recommendation can really be considered, you know, having having been approved unless you've got, you know, a, a chorus of voices saying so, right? Um, I, I, I'll still leave that up to the chair to decide kind of on a point by point basis, like how much feedback is enough to really say this represents a consensus view rather than an individual view. Okay, thanks, Brian. Right, and I was I was on um, funeral preparations on, so I couldn't attend Thursday's call. So, um, but I will work. I will go back and uh, make the change. You know, undo some of the changes to the document and uh, present it to the performance and scale working group again. I, I appreciate the feedback and the suggestions. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark, and thanks for continuing to work on it at a tough time. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, um, anything more on that? And uh, maybe just, uh, I think I heard Rom and I heard uh, Arno offer to send some uh, material uh, on you know how to build consensus. I think it's useful. I, I know, uh, I recall back when I was first uh, named a chair at the W3C that it, it was very uh, handy for me. So uh, uh, at least the stuff that I know is going to circulate. So um, much appreciated if you could share that, uh, Ram and, and Arno. <clears throat> and then finally we have, yep, thank you. And then finally, uh, Hart wanted uh, five minutes of our time to talk about uh, an update on the white paper working group. Sure, um, thanks, Chris. So I base, I wanted to say a few things. Um, first of all, we are approaching what should hopefully be the completion of a draft that 
of the white paper that we can send to the TSC and others to get uh, final edits and final approval. So hopefully that should be out in the not too distant future. Uh, that's point number one. Point number two is we, as a working group, thought that it might be better to rename the white paper the Hyperledger Position Paper. Uh, and we're curious what the TSC thought about that, um, as well as what approval process we would need to go through to make that happen. Um, and the sort of third point uh, we wanted to bring up <clears throat> was we have a uh, actually relatively good infrastructure where the white paper is now a tech document. Uh, it lives in a GitHub. You can issue pull requests and so forth. But right now, this lives in Mix GitHub account, um, and we think the Linux Foundation account would be a more appropriate place to to store this. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to move the documentation uh, over properly to uh, whatever was appropriate. Um, I don't have a problem in moving the repo into the Hyperledger org. Okay. Um, Brian, you I have me. Use subversion. <laughs> oh, <I'm still> <laughs> <laughs> no subversion, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So I, just I, go ahead. I think the, uh, the so, so I mean I I don't have a problem at all. I think that's <clears throat> you know whether it's in a wiki or whether it's in a, a repo. Um, I think that's th those are both appropriate. Um, and so I think the thing to do would be for, <clears throat> I'll start a, a thread with Rye and, um, and Mick and, and Hart and we'll, uh, we'll get it moved over. Sounds great. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it for the update. Um, are people and generally okay with calling this a position paper instead of a white paper? Yeah, I, I like the sound of that. I think the the white paper title had always been a little bit awkward. So uh, yeah, I, I think that has a good direction. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense as well. So but just just to play it back to see whether my interpretation is is is, is what you what you're suggesting. White paper implies this is something you should read to understand what what this thing does or, or how it works but of course there is no thing here there's a collection of things whereas a position paper outlines almost a, a set of principles and um or, or even, even beliefs or statement of direction that that see i would say are, are acted at a either in, at an earlier stage or at a higher level of abstraction so, so if that's the thinking behind the proposal i think it makes a lot of sense yeah that was our thought process basically richard so thanks yeah Um, I'd like to point out that um, for the technical stuff, can we just email directly to help desk at Hyperledger? Um, we'll get better response if we do that instead of just emailing Rye directly. Okie dokie. All right, yeah, that was it for me. Thanks, everyone. I don't know, Brian, I mean, were you on mute? Maybe I, I don't have a problem with the name change. And it seems like others are supportive as well. Is Brian still on? I may have lost him. A, a technicality, probably a trivial one. Am I right in thinking, I'm not sure it's the incubation entry or exit criteria, do one or other of them make reference to the architecture white paper? So we might need to align that or, or, or check that line in the um, in the criteria. And I, so this isn't the, uh, I believe the architecture white paper is is still a separate thing. Yes. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Okay. Yep. And that's that's the the document that the architecture working group is is preparing. Yep. <coughs> Sorry, on that note, we did uh, release uh, the first article. Uh, thanks to everyone in the group and to uh, yes. to uh, uh, folks in the marketing committee to help us with that. Yeah, so maybe it would be worth a minute or two from you on on that to just make sure everybody's aware of, of that first article and then talk a little bit about the other artifact. Yeah. 
projects that you guys are working on? Sure. Uh, so, so the uh, I don't know if uh, everyone got a chance to see. It's been published in the uh, Hyperledger site. Uh, so the first article that we covered uh, was uh, just a quick overview of uh, the overall uh, architectural framework, and most of the uh, actual content was focused on uh, the functional requirements uh, uh, at the high level for the consensus uh, function, if you will. Uh, and uh, it went on with a generic description uh, that's going to be there in the architecture document and covered uh, the particular implementation uh, that's supported by uh, the different projects, uh, Fabric, Sawtooth Lake, uh, Iroha, Indy, uh, uh, and, and so forth, and the comparison of uh, the consensus approaches there and the pros and cons. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to look at it, please uh, take a look at it and uh, send us feedback. Uh, like every, all other documents, this will be a living document that we can update as well. Uh, and the thought is to go on uh, and uh, do the same thing for the other um, um, modules layers that we have been working on. The next, the immediate next one being the smart contract uh, functions. All right, thanks, Ram. Any other questions for Mount? If not, then, um, <clears throat> and unless there's any other agenda items, we'll give people 25 minutes back. All right, thanks, everyone. Enjoy your summer. Well, have a good day, everyone, and look forward to seeing all of you soon. Bye. Hey, Doyle. Well.